and welcome back to another episode uh, of my podcast still no official name we're working on it that's not important though what's more important today is that i have the honor to have one of my great friends teammate felan fernando diaz man thank you for coming thank you bro for having me here man it's uh the pleasure is all mine Thanks for that introduction. I feel like a rock star. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. And thanks to the guy behind the thing that is Christos that is working all the things. So thank you, Christos. Enigma also. TV CEO guys behind the cameras <laughs> helping us make this happen. But by the way, great card. Um, great card. Just a couple of days ago, Black Widow Invitational. We had sick matches. And I feel like these events, man, are just. I mean, of course, the setup is great. Where you do it is great. The The all the you know we talked about this in the first episode like it's good to have production and whatnot but the athletes are bringing it man oh yeah the I athletes f- are I bringing feel, it i feel like i'm the best sitting in the house for great events almost every weekend yeah it's, it's great it's great amazing and they're stepping it up and the challenges and i and i always see the streaks going on and people are looking at those streaks and uh, and it's really good. It's really, it's really freaking good. Our team did pretty good. We had, uh, we had a lot of teammates compete on it. Helena did, Helena, right? Um, we had Luke. Beautiful matches, guys. You can catch them on Enigma TV, obviously. Um, five bucks a month, right? Yes. Papadelos is keeping it Bruh. affordable. To if the you, if you, if six, six. Na- you, you bumped it up. He had he to. He bumped it up. He, he had it up. to. He had but to. Hey, bro. Econ- <laughs> where the go- economics are going, he had to. Plus, still for six ninety nine, you get a, you get in a great deal. It's still not much, honestly, for the amount of like the level of the guys that are on it. Obviously, it's like up and comers, right? But it's still very, very, very good. Anyways, enough about that. El Fuerte. So first time I met you, we were we were doing this Modolfo camp in Puerto Rico like when was it i think it was 20 i don't remember you went to the first one i remember yeah you went yeah. before the guys moved there you went there yeah i think with craig and uh, it was ethan mm-hmm. and uh i think it was mike press right aj aj agazarm edwin right right uh who else it was braulio it was in Brawley, right yeah Augustima. yeah yeah were you di- no you weren't there there was at some point bro craig and and not craig sorry AJ and, and Edwin got into like a bad one, man. I they see. I saw the animosity with AJ like the second day between between <laughs> like, like AJ and Edwin. Animosity with no, with only like Perez with most of the guys because AJ didn't get along with a lot of the guys. I'm he sorry. didn't. He didn't. I mean, that's what I saw. That's yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it, dude, it's crazy because they also like. I remember hearing the story like AJ stayed at Edwin's house for so long. Like, remember when they were training and then he'd host them and then he, it's almost like when you get so close to someone, tensions come up, you know? Because cause the, the more time you, I think the more time you spend with people, you, you get to see those sides that only appeared when they by themselves. Mm-hmm. And they're like those things that they cannot get rid of. Yeah. I can be, I can be good. I can just switch things but i cannot change what the roots are you know what i mean like what I, if i fart i don't know uh, walking around the living room and you don't like the farting that's something that i yeah. keep doing that's why they say like <clears throat> you shouldn't necessarily move in with a chick before you guys get married do you agree with that um i i, I could agree with that i could agree with that because because again i i i've been i left i i I did that already, so I. That's I, true. I, I, That's actually told I was about. living with chicks already, so I know what it takes, and, and and I know what it's like, and it's a difficult thing. You can even get married. It doesn't. I don't think that it matters that much. I'm I think I'm just talking shit because I don't think that it matters that much. Because at the end of the day, I've seen married couples that don't last that long, and people that just keep their relationship going, 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 no mm-hmm. titles and things, and they decided <laughs> to move, and they and they just keep going and going and going and going and going. So, I think it's depending on it depends on the people back, yes. dude my parents made it work and they were like living apart for like almost 15 years and they're wow. still together you wow. know different continents distance to distance really makes like make things a lot harder yeah. it was difficult but yeah. then when you have kids obviously it's different you know when, yeah. you, when you have two kids and whatnot this is different and i think that and i think society where it's now is very different because remember 
before they didn't have that much access to the other sex like now yeah with the internet with the uh, apps with everything mm. they have a lot of access now the, now a chick can get a thousand likes for a picture in a minute yeah and those thousand likes probably 900 of them are males yeah so she already is getting the attention and vice versa obviously with the guys the guys now have more access to chicks and things like that and vice versa yeah, yeah. anyways whatever yeah. Fernando, let's get to know you a little bit better, man. I love finding things out. So usually what I do with this podcast, I, at least for now, I've been bringing on teammates and I get to know them better. You know, I get to hear about their 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 sacrifices, what they've done. And so far, I've done two, two episodes. You're the third one. And I'm seeing a lot of like overlapping uh, things that people do, like the same sacrifices, the things they need to do. And we want to hear your side of the story, right? You're making things work right now you, where you live. Sorry. Where you're living in Austin, you're training, you're leveling up, and we want to know how you got here. So just to get to know you briefly, brief summary of Fernando, Fernando's life. Where were you born? Okay, so I was born in Puerto Rico, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. San Juan, Puerto Rico, but your parents are? Dominicans. Dominicans. Yeah, they were, they oh traveled, they traveled, <laughs> they traveled to PR. Uh, my mom wanted to pursue being a nurse. So they traveled to PR, plus my dad was a musician. And back then, merengue, salsa were the top music in everywhere. You can go any party you would like, and merengue and salsa were the top acts. It's not like reggaeton. Reggaeton back then was look at it like, oh, we don't want that here. But back then, it was like that. <laughs> everywhere you go, it was either merengue or salsa you got it. And my dad took advantage of the fact that he knew how to play the, trum like the trumpet. Okay. He, w he was really good at it. So he moved here to PR because he got the opportunity to play for some groups in PR and things like that. So yeah. that's sick. So that's the yeah. artist in you. Now we understand where the where the merengue comes from when you're yeah, on the mats. Yeah, yeah. I learned how to dance. Where those I learned how to dance since I was little because most of the time my mom couldn't take me to work with her. So my dad, I would go to those activities with my dad. I'm the oldest one, so I, I, it w it was the time that I just go with them, and the wives of the other musicians or somebody will grab me and dance with me, you Let's know what I mean? Go. To keep me entertained because I was young. Yeah. So that salsa, merengue, bachata, since I was younger, I've, I've been doing I've been that. That's amazing, man. And so, by the way, Fernando's the guy who taught me how to dance uh, salsa. So whenever you guys see my hips shaking, whenever <laughs> you see that, that suave, you guys know who to thank. Okay, ladies, you want to learn? You got the man right here. El Fuerte. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> Favorite uh, merengue artist? Juan Luis Guerra. Juan who? Juan Luis Guerra. It's a uh, Dominican artist who is... Uh, Juan Luis Guerra. Juan Luis Guerra, yeah, bro. It's the, he used to have a group called Juan Luis Guerra in 440, but then he just went on himself and he just called Juan Luis Guerra. But, bro, the, the, the writing on his music, the flow on his music, and mm. the earliest album was a merengue, like, uh, like bro, like, like uh, so beautiful. A freaking great merengue. It's one little era. If you haven't heard of him, look for him. It's really good. You guys also, while we were in Puerto Rico, has introduced me to a lot of good salsa artists. And honestly, I find this super helpful for me because it helps me like keep my Spanish sharp. Yeah. You know, like yeah. lyrics are slower. It's it's nice music. You can like you're doing something. It's it's nice like background music. It's not like too aggressive. Um, which is maybe why I understand why you're not a big fan of you're not a big fan of reggaeton, are you? Uh no. Uh, I don't. I don't really like reggaeton at all. I don't. <laughs> I, can, I always come I into can, the gym singing that shit just to piss you guys I off, can, man. I can not me because I mean I don't. It's not that I don't. I hate it. Oh my god, to my guts. But at the end of the day, it's not my cup of tea. I okay. don't know why everybody yeah. goes crazy. Oh my god, by Bonnie and things like that. I'll understand that it's like a kind of a that kind of music that you hear it and, and you need to move it's it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. understandable why people like it yeah but it's not my cup of tea whatever man it's my maybe coming up you had the good kind of music you, you got accustomed to like such quality and then it's live performance too so it's like really good music plus my neighbors and best friends were one of them used to travel all the way to new york every summer to visit his family so every time he came back he came back with a music like hip-hop music oh, all the time yeah. and my backyard neighbor used to have like rock music spanish rock music so those were my friends i didn't listen to reggaeton almost anytime that's true well the only reason i say that's true is because i got to ride with you a lot <laughs> when we were in puerto rico come on man how many hours did i spend in the red rocket that that car of yours Bro. and then the playlist man i knew your place by heart 
whether John was in the car, whether it was just me, whether it was the yeah, boys. Yeah, but you know that when John was in the car, it's only strictly rock. Yeah. You know that it was going to be some metal shit. You know, it's going to be some Iron Maiden. You know, it's going to be some Metallica. You know, it's going to be something hard. Dude, you know? that, that, honestly, I think you're one of the, if not the MVP. <laughs> the MVP during her time in Puerto Rico, man. I, mean, I was the one that felt blessed to have you guys in PR. You know yeah. what I mean? When I, when I, when I, after after you guys left back to New York, and I said, okay, man, I, at least I got that relationship going. So if I go to New York, I'm not gonna be a stranger to John, to Gordon, yeah. to Gary. So I can go to the Blue Basement and freaking train with them. That would be sick. Because I already went two times to New York, but I wasn't able to catch your classes. Never. You did the gi? With no gi, and with the gi, I catch John one time because he was cleaning a room that he had in the back. He like was the, cleaning it. He was like kind of taking st things out. And that was my second time in New York. And the only guy that I catch was John. And it was because of that. I got a picture of him. And I look like I fucking ass. Like, Did he have hair when you took that picture? No, bro. No. Oh, okay. So no, when was, he was balling right? Yeah, it was recently. It was more recently. Then. But having you guys in PR, then leaving, I thought I would never see you guys again. And then I get the message like, hey, bro, you're not going to believe this. These guys decided that they wanted to move. Who, to who told you? Uh, Mo. El Mohasin. Mo and Gordon. It was Mo and then like, a day later was Gordon. Sick. So uh, that when I got the Gordon message, that's when I said, "Okay, is this is yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. Trans so. transformation." Yeah. Man. So wait, growing up, so growing up, was it like was your dream like because you had your your father like you were seeing him perform and everything? Was your dream to become like an artist or you had some other dreams in mind like as a as a growing up? I uh, have this, kind of I had I have different aspirations. I wanted like to I know that I wanted to help people i know that i wanted to teach i know that i wanted to i i felt that that was something that i like to do difference in my growing up and how my group what situation was i went all the ways yeah then i decided that that wasn't the way and, and i went to pursue what i wanted okay obviously pandemic changed everything yeah i was already a personal training but i was a trainer in puerto rico i was I was good in PR. I was yeah, good in my I remember you, you. You're from what I remember when I met you the first time. So from the mo first Madolfo camp up until we moved, I I remember you used to show people around the the island, right? Yeah. There's like so you're like very proud of your roots. Oh yeah. You knew every little manantial, every beach, every little hiking trip. You knew it <laughs> so well. You're like, oh, how many? How much? We have 20 minutes to hike. Okay, this takes 20 minutes back and forth. Boom, let's go. So, so you enjoyed that, don't you? Oh, no? yeah. Puerto Rico, actually, before I was deciding either to establish there a company with a friend that we were going to do that, like tourism and like show people around. Yeah. Or move here. So at the end of the day, I just decided to move here because this was what I felt it was stronger. Oh, so you had when you when you were faced with the decision. So do I move to Austin or do I go back to doing like showing people around? You decided to move to Austin. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you saw like the long term, I mean, benefit. I guess, bro. This is like for me. This was people are telling me, bro, you crazy at your age doing that. What the fuck are you doing? It, I mean, yeah. I mean, you I'm can you blame them? I, exactly. I I don't blame anybody. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's like besides the relationship that I got together with Gordon and you guys, because it's a different relationship that I already had established mm. in PR. It's like Harvard coming. Yeah. To visit and saying, "Hey, I mean, we have some some space. You want to come with us? You don't have to." Like, yeah. Bro, of course I'm gonna go. Yeah. What 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 am I gonna lose? Like being in PR, which I was already like all my life, knowing all the corners. Yeah, PR is very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, PR is amazing. But I think jujitsu and where jujitsu it's going, it can open more opportunities or more doors for me. At the end of the day, that's how I looked at it. Hundred percent. Because people think that. Here, I'm just going to learn how to compete. And no, I'm learning a lot how to teach. And people don't understand that John and Gordon and Gary, and even now Meregali, and, and most of the guys, not only show you how to kick ass, they, only, they also show you how to show how to kick ass, yeah. which is really good, man. Yeah, I feel like being around people like that, it, it makes you like, you know, it sounds super cheesy and cliche, like you are who you surround yourself with. But it's true, man. You know, you see people, um, you know, acting in a certain way. You know, they have certain behaviors. You know, it's, it's not because, like, 
you go to a certain room that you're going to train with the best in the world, but you're going to train like the best in the world. You know, you have that environment and you're learning and you're improving. And then, you know, it's, it's good to be able to learn how to, you know, pass that on afterwards. You know what I mean? So is that is that like one of your long term goals actually is moving back to PR one day and or wherever and then being able to you know help the up and coming generation hopefully hopefully yeah. that's actually was when i was in pr i was like the christos but in pr actually i was doing events in pr oh no way yeah i was doing events in pr i was i, w- I had a page in pr we just got you a new I event w- uh, no. <laughs> i was doing all the t- all the things in pr actually Sick. and and so uh oh, that's true yeah. i remember i remember you telling me that you had like little events and yeah whatnot. i was doing little events i had my own page in pr talking about the local shit that was going on oh, I, I got all that you know what i mean it's still there i mean i'm not using it anymore because i'm not there yeah but Again, it's good to see that in PR they're still doing events. Hopefully, I get back there yeah. one day and I can establish something. And obviously, with now with the backup of John and Gordon and, and Gary, oh, that's everybody, man. Everybody, everybody, we're all ready to back you up. I'm ready. I'll go compete in Puerto Rico. I know, Rico, I know. Mm-hmm. So it will be great to see something happening over there later or soon or whatever. But definitely, that's something behind my thought of coming here. Yeah, it's like having that opportunity to come here, man. I got, I got a lot of a lot of hate for it. I which got is, a lot of which good is a things good time. for it. Yeah. I don't really care. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just glad that I had the people that I had behind me and and and, and pushing me to do this. Mm. So, yeah, man. At the end of the day, it's my life. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. having fun with it. So you're you're also behind the um, while while we're at it. You you're also behind the YouTube the the new YouTube account. For I didn't want it. you to tell that because I already got a lot of shit for it, but it's okay. It's no, okay. so <laughs> it's I'm okay. People, you are brutal. I read the comments. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. We have to get better at a lot of things. You're looking at a thirty year old guy who has <laughs> never done that before. I'm just getting better at it. So yeah, I know. I take it as a criticism. Thank you so much for all your thoughts and prayers and all that. And, uh, but yeah, I saw it as a way to show something out of new wave that nobody sings because everybody sings only the competition and nobody only see the, the freaking serious faces of everybody and, and that. But yeah. nobody see that we have a lot of good times over there <laughs> and, and how the chemistry is and everything is happening. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... In yeah. Spanish, it translates to van comer mierda. Hey, se pueden ir al carajo. <laughs> <laughs> Look for that. That's it. You guys can Google translate. <laughs> we can uh, we can keep going. Yeah, yeah man, I mean, it's usually when you're doing something and you're getting hate. I mean, I don't know. Is it mostly from people close to you? Is it people like that are in, like too close to you? I, I haven't. I haven't. I mean, both? I mean, it's different because the YouTube thing, I get hate from people that I don't really know. And love for people that I don't really know. Yeah. Because I get I get a lot of also good comments. Like I saw one comment one day, bro. What do you expect? It's good. It's a good video. It's okay. It's, it's something. Fine, you know yeah. what I mean? But obviously people are gonna hate. And I see it as it is. I had the opportunity to be in the best room in the world, and you don't. <laughs> I'm here. You're not. I'm recording this. You can. So I'm 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 seeing it as 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 the opportunity that I have to do something. Mm. And if I'm gonna be thinking about what people say. I wouldn't be here. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing exactly, that. Man, exactly. I'm not, I wouldn't be doing all the things that I, you know what I mean? That yeah. I want to do. Mm. I know that I made some mistakes in my life that has brought me to a point where I cannot be where I wish I would be right now. I mean, but at the end of the day, I'm working towards mixing all up to get something better that I thought that I will get. Yeah. So, it's all about how you look at things, man. Exactly. You, the lens, the lens you look at things, man. If you, if you're going to look at things and, and dwell and and look at it as oh shit this slowed me down this or you look at it as something that propelled you forward and gave you the strength and then the the experience in life then it's all good man yeah things happen in your life the way the the time they should the way they should and you cannot change it especially if it's done you know and that's something i find like unfortunate sometimes people are like being held back by people close to them like super 100%, close to them 100%. you know what i mean Puerto Rico, i got a lot of that yeah but the Rico, i definitely got a lot of People that I thought that would be like so happy because this is happening. Mm. And you know, yeah. I invited almost everybody. Mm. But obviously, I cannot let anybody in. People should know now that we're having this opportunity. Taz, I can say it. 
The room was so full all the time Dude, it was that we didn't have space to even train ourselves, let alone That's let true. anybody just go in no. like they wanted mm -hmm. it to go in. Mm -hmm. So I, I, like I said, I invited some people. Yeah, obviously I'm going to take care of my people. Of course. Yeah. And we, what hurts me the most was that even though that I brought some people to train with us, like an opportunity to do it, I even got some shit from those people when they realized, oh shit, they're not just passing by. Mm. They're gonna move here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they all saw it as a competition. They all saw it like, oh, they're gonna like eliminate all the school CPR, bro. That's they're not gonna do that. Fear. It's a different thing. That's it's a different feeling. Mm. Actually, we all can get together and get better at this. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's that survival instinct that kicks in. Yeah. You know what I mean? People like we're like programmed our brains are still programmed for survival ego, also yeah. ego well the ego is the good ego is but that ego is basically the survival mode that kicks in because yep. without the ego I mean you're you're not gonna want to find food you're not gonna want to like go out and hunt and you're not gonna look after yourself right but obviously when the ego is taken a bit too far you stay in that survival mode fuck i gotta survive i gotta like eat it And then that's when the fear of, oh, my, they go to, like, to the extreme. Oh, shit, my gym is going to disappear. Yeah. I'm going to go hungry. I'm going to be homeless. My life is going to end. But it's not like that. There's always enough yeah. for everybody. And you got to look at it in a way where, you know, it benefits you. And yeah. find a way for it to benefit you. 100%. But Actually, after you guys left, they're doing no more nogi. No, no more nogi? No, they're doing gi, but they're doing, like, more nogi. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, more nogi. Sorry. Yeah, no, know, no, it's fine, it's fine. My language. No, okay. and, uh, and, yeah, they're actually applying more leg locks, and they're applying more things that they know. That's that good. They should get, like, ahead of, but it's really good. It's really good. Hopefully, I get back soon, and, and yeah, and we do it. I, like I respect this. how cold turkey you guys made that switch, because, personally, some people may already know, I've moved a lot throughout my life. You know, I was born in Lebanon, then I moved to Saudi Arabia, then Canada, then New York, then this, then that. So for me, adapting and changing, obviously it's been something that I've been used to pretty much my whole life, moving from place to place. But at least it was, you know, with, with the family for the most part, up until, you know, I left Montreal for New York. But for you guys, especially you and Luis, Luis Coyasso, who maybe one day we'll have, but there won't be much talk from him. It'll probably be me just doing the monologue yeah. and him telling me very good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Juan, he was, yeah, obviously he's, he's young, the other, the other guy that moved with you guys. Um, but for you guys, your whole life, lives, I mean, growing up in one place and then leaving, how hard was it to make the, the decision? Because I remember like when we found out you were devastated, bro. It looked like, like I was like trying to cheer you up and put it yeah. like, bro, like it just was, move It was us. impossible. It wasn't possible to cheer me up because I knew that the opportunity of the life one time that we had in PR was gone. Uh, and I knew it and mm. I knew it and, I, and, and everybody knew it. For now, it was gone yeah, for now. Yeah, it was now. cool for now. Yeah, for sure. But, but at, the, at, at the moment, obviously I was going to, feel heartbroken because I you know that I did all I could dude I did all I could yeah yeah you did a lot man like so. I remember fucking flying in I remember flying out sometimes at like 6 a.m. flights Fernando picking me up dropping me off going back to pick up John to drop him off to take him there to come back to pick him up to go help Gordon to go help Mo to go boom 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 and then of course it was super stressful for you man Bro. was it more stressful for you Obviously, you, you had, you know, you, it was it, it had meaning for you because you were thinking on, you know, the big picture, helping the island, this, that. So it had meaning, so you didn't mind doing it, but it was a lot of stress too, man. Bro. Not just for you, for like even Bro. Mo. Mo, I was like, I, would, I saw him towards the end of her stay. Poor man. Yeah, and then man. he had ADCC on top of it too yeah. and everything. Poor man. It, he, was, it was a difficult time. It, it was, was stressful for a lot of people, man. It was There a was, difficult time. Those, and, those last two months was very difficult. And then, of course, you... You kind of like for people that are doubting, of course, there's going to be tension with teammates and everything if there's that much stress, you know, and then they're athletes on top of it. They got to perform. They got to. So there's a lot of stress. So, of course, things are going to go to shit. You can't blame like an island for it. You know no. what I mean? So, yeah, I'm glad that you said that you can now blame an island for it because, again, I love my island to death. So I'm going to defend it against anybody. Puerto and, Rico. And, and and I'm sorry, and I'm sorry that that I hear around that the Puerto Rico was a, a hell, Puerto Rico was a shithole, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Puerto Rico was whatever you want to make with it. 
Yeah. At the end of the day, it was because Gordon was one of the ones that it was all the weekends he was in the West Coast hanging out at the beach and it was great for him. Mm. You know what I mean? Gary was more known in La Perla than I was. <laughs> I was I, sometimes I walked down to La Perla to talk to, to my friends and they would tell me like oh bro the gringo was here oh the gringo oh the gringo okay okay, gringo okay. With the, mullet. the gringo with the Chinese guy okay yeah 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 then both then both you think Chinese then both then both bro they were fucking hanging out more there than me was so That's yeah amazing, yeah so they bro. were more part of La Perla than I was yeah and uh and Puerto Rico was what you made of it obviously yeah, guys yeah. it was going to be difficult for you because yeah. none of you had the experience to be there mm. and things are slow and different and obviously the the language barrier was a different change for you Not guys that much. everybody so, spoke english bro. i mean yeah yeah but you know you know people don't 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 get that patient yeah, sometimes yeah. No, yeah. Puerto Rico was amazing and uh and 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 yeah they had the conflict and the things and whatever happened but at the end of the day you cannot blame an island for whatever happened yeah i mean there were power outages sometimes we had to train with power outages but we've had power outages here in in Austin first world I mean, what do you have to say to that? I mean, yeah. yeah. Con yeah. papita. Yeah, con papita. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I understand. I understand. Obviously, I understand that the bigger picture is that money wise, business wise and, and competition wise, obviously moving yeah. to the States is the best freaking option. Yeah. Plus, you get to get to more people. If it wasn't for that move, we didn't have Christos. We didn't have Luke. We didn't have Dave Davis. We didn't have Davis, uh, yeah. we didn't have all those guys probably mm -hmm. having the opportunity to come to train and yeah. be part of the team. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it was a bomb to, that that happened, but yeah, now look where we are now. So I mean, really look, if anything, if, if that move benefited us from anything, it's also New York. I mean, New York was accessible. We had a big room, obviously, but for people from the outside, it was very hard to make it to New York. It's expensive. Yeah. It's, it's easy to get to New York, but then staying and surviving in New York is pretty hard, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, you don't need a car. You can commute and everything, but it's a bit more of a rough competitive like crazy city and i feel like getting john to move was already a success in that, itself yeah, exactly you know what i mean when i heard that john was moving i didn't believe it at all yeah me neither <laughs> when so, i saw that post i said okay all of us all of us that were still in new york were like we're staying until john leaves when i see john at the gate boarding the flight to there puerto we rico <laughs> then, we then, we're then we're going i remember that so i was like oh shit john's actually moving that's crazy, it's crazy. so was it more stressful during that time or you guys got got hit with a pretty bad hurricane right like yeah, how yeah. many years ago yeah yeah like what uh, year was, it was that uh, before the pandemic like yeah it was like like five four years ago something like that i don't know it was we he got hit by two two big so ones it was, it was one that like like was the hey we're coming and the other one behind it like it blew out of Damn. like it was really bad that's when the it was already damaged because Puerto Rico, to be honest, is a beautiful island, but the government there is a piece of shit. Neglect. Yeah, so neglects a lot. And uh, it's difficult to get better when you don't, you don't do what you're supposed to do. So, yeah, I have to give it that Puerto Rico has that problem really bad. Like the, the hurricanes? The, with the, with, with how to deal with the hurricanes, how to recover from hurricanes. I mean, it's a, it's a natural disaster. Look what happened in, in Turkey, man. Turkey got hit pretty hard in the Middle East, too. I mean, it didn't it didn't hit as hard in Lebanon, but I had, you know, family that woke up from how rough it was. You can't control that stuff. You know what I mean? What, what was it like, like being in Puerto Rico during that time, like after the, the It was hit? months without power. Damn. Months without power. That's crazy. Like almost a month without water. No. The lines to get gas. Sometimes you had to leave your car the night before. No. At the spot. Are the, you serious? I'm not joking. That's you crazy. had to leave your car the night before. So um, sometimes you'd be the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. You know what I mean? And once they start, they start. You have to be in your car. If you're not in your car, they move your car. Oh, they're they pass gonna find you, way, yeah. you. You lost your place. Mm -hmm. So it's it was difficult. It was very difficult. That's crazy, it was man. Very very difficult to deal with it. Thank God I used to do things like that. I don't really mind being without power and things like that. So when it happened here, oh, um, second nature. I mean, it was great. Yeah, <laughs> but power like how'd you guys generators? Generators. Yeah, a lot of generators. Damn. That's when the solar. Uh, a, a lot of people got those solar things, panels in the in Puerto in Rico? houses. Yeah, now because of the hurricanes and the things and the the power outage, they decided to do that. That's insane. But Puerto Rico has a lot of generators. A lot of people has them in the house now. 
yeah that's crazy i mean that 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 experience must have like definitely strengthened a lot of people that and before that there's has been a lot of hurricane experiences before that in puerto yeah. rico yeah, yeah. that's crazy were you were you guys like still th- you not even thinking about training at that point yeah we did train you guys still train oh yeah we did train of course that's <laughs> no power don't worry about it we change the hours we do we figure something out we we used to like a lot of gallons we bring gallons put the phone against the gallon so that the light can reel a little bit that's sick bit. you find the way man yeah we you did. find the yeah, way yeah, yeah, this. ingenuity you guys found the way to make it here i'm sure at first was pretty difficult a lot difficult a lot difficult it was very difficult for me changing my nature environment yes because you know mm. that i was always hiking always in a waterfall always yeah. on the beach lost mm. somewhere in puerto rico yeah so for me that was the biggest change you know what I mean? But hit. I always wanted to test myself to go back to zero, like to square one, yeah. nothing, and try it elsewhere. I mean, there's a group of people that you already know here, which is good. Which was make it a lot easier. But then at least now, like, you see the differences between, like, Puerto Rico and a city like Austin. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. And you're adapting to it nicely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin is not that bad. Austin has its out- outside things. A lot of people do things outside. Mm-hmm. They're dog-friendly. They're pe- pet-friendly. A lot of people are pet-friendly here, so which is good. I still got the ways to get some to some water because there's a lot of lakes, a lot of places yeah. you can get a dip here, so it's not that bad. I mean, you. it takes time to get used to it. I know, like, when I go to Montreal, for example, I'm like, man, this sucks. This, this is crazy. This is, that's what you're used to. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? The yeah, driving, yeah. even the driving. Like, you notice the difference in how people drive here? Yeah, a lot. Tell it's, me. It's. I thought the Puerto Ricans drive bad, but here the bad drivers also. Describe bad. Oh, yeah, it's freaking. It's freaking aggressive. Aggressive here? I think that here it's very aggressive. They're. I find it's the. I find they're soft as shit. Ah, here, bro. No, behind I find the wheel. Very aggressive. Aggressive? How? Yeah, because people here that's no. There's no like, oh yeah, go ahead. There's I, too I, much of that. Th- I don't think so. I think that people here just go, 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 and they don't give a fuck if you if you try to get in the middle. Fuck you, bro. I'm gonna just run to it. I don't know, man. Maybe you've been running into me because I'm the one that does that. <laughs> Maybe I'm the one you've been running into this All whole time. All the time, because cars. dude, the light goes green here. People are. So, I mean, it's a lot of pickups too. A lot of big yeah, yeah, cars yeah, yeah. that take time to turn, take time to. Man, the one like two cars per light. I'm like, guys, wake up. Like, <laughs> me, I find here people are like super mellow behind the wheel. I know, I hear mellow it. and like the change in lanes. So like, get up, wake up, let's go. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Whereas in Puerto Rico, it's more like that. Whereas like people, all right, they got to switch lanes. They don't even let you know, man. I uh, lo- yeah, Puerto Rico, we don't think that. Uh, the, the, I think that signals got when they, oh, where's that car going to Puerto Rico? Take the signals off. Yeah, they're you not gonna work. You it. don't need. The they're signal. not gonna use it, so take, you can take them <laughs> off. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I remember asking people. I'm like, I think it was you that asked. And I think in Puerto Rico, they're ahead in the driving, uh, the driving systems. They're ahead. They're like here. It's like let's say brown belts. There, they're coral belts already. Bro. <laughs> it's like I'm asking. I'm like, is it is it a common thing that people don't put their like uh, you know like blinkers to let people know that oh I'm gonna switch lanes or anything? It's like no, they don't. No. And then they have like. It's a thought process because if you let them know you're gonna switch lanes, they're not gonna let you. They're go. not gonna. <laughs> are uh, you not gonna? They're not. <laughs> fuck you, bro. <laughs> not on me. Not on me. Not on me. Whereas here, you put I'm it, and they're like, they're like accelerating, breaking. No, it's bro, like, I don't, oh. I don't, I don't think no. You, you be hanging out in the different places. I think that where I go is a lot of Latinos, I guess. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Maybe that's it. You're in the Puerto Rican area. Yeah, maybe Mexican and Puerto Rican area for sure. So at least at least here there's a big Latin community too. You I've know? seen a lot of people. Now I when more I came Mexicans here more Mexicans though. When I came, uh, yeah, it's more Mexican than, than yeah, but still Spanish. You know Spanish, I mean? yeah, no, it's good. At the end of the day, I, I when I came here like the first month, I'm very proud of my Puerto Rican and I talk Spanish in my house. The only language that we speak is Spanish, so it's uh, I said that uh, I'm going to talk Spanish because I know that not too many people know. But oh, I know. I, 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 like two weeks took me to realize. Wait. You have to be careful what you say. No, I know that. I know that my slang, Puerto Rican slang, gets me around some mm. things because some Mexicans don't understand too much the Puerto Rican slang. Dude, Puerto Rican so Spanish is it has its own. It's yeah. It's like I, I compare it to like French Canadian to French from France. They're like 
not as much but dude letters disappear letters are changed like exactly. there's no r's in port yes, in yes, puerto, puerto rico yeah Fernan. yeah <laughs> right yeah it depends it depends where you which part of puerto rico you are it can get a little bit like worse or it could get a little bit better right? yeah yeah no at the end tourism at the end of the stay in puerto rico man it was spanish was sharp as shit man i loved it and, and people don't understand i learned my english from watching movies and music and things like that so you can learn to spanish by doing that also. yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent so you've been overcoming a lot of shit, man. You lived in, in I wouldn't call it hell because it was still like a beautiful island, but hurricane. Yeah, hell. But helping us move right. I remember once we were driving, it was John in the front, I think four guys in the back, yeah. and then one guy in the trunk. Bro, we used to put red. Nick, Nick, Nick Ortiz usually was in the trunk. Yeah, and he yeah. loved it. John in the front seat. Yeah. Big Dan. Oh, my God. You. Oh, my God. Oh <laughs> and my. I think Damien sometimes and not even damien sometimes or the visitors or whatever or people from out of, yeah whoever. it was insane it man was insane. those yeah mvp so you've been overcoming a lot of shit but things are looking good now thank right god. you're thank settling god. in here nicely thank god, thank god. you're training yes, you sir. recently got your brown belt yes from yes yes from mr gordon Ryan. el golden el golden, el golden. El gol- la, la cabra la cabra golden. la cabra la cabra means the goat by the way la cabra golden la cabra, la cabra. <laughs> How is that like getting your brown belt from? I mean, it's it's. It, I'm still don't believe that I'm a Gordon Ryan like brown belt. Yeah. To be honest with you, it's still something that I still look at that belt and I'm like, God damn, it's there. But it's, you, it yes. wasn't a joke. Yeah. But but it, I feel blessed, thankful. Mm-hmm. Obviously, every time I get into the room and I get my ass whooped by everybody in that room, <laughs> it's, it goes away. <laughs> but it's but it's really good, man, to feel that uh, he trusts me enough to yeah. give me that belt. Mm-hmm. That's how I. That's how I look at it. Yeah, but if you give it to you, like it means it means you, bro. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's what I mean. So it, that also opens a lot of doors for me. So it's like again, it's like Harvard giving you a title of yeah, yeah. you graduated from this and this. And that's gonna and elevate your game like exactly, crazy. Exactly. Yeah. You've so, been. No, I've been. I mean, we we train pretty often, but I've been seeing like a lot of improvements since the first time that. That we train in Let's Puerto Rico to now, that, yeah. <laughs> you notice a big difference oh, in your yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that a lot of moves and a lot of visions in jujitsu that I didn't know. That mm-hmm. I thought that I thought, okay, this is. I was a purple belt in Puerto Rico, and I thought that I was decent. Yeah. Then I met you guys, and I said I definitely suck. Yeah. I'm going wa- back to white belt. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was it was a humbling experience. It was really good to see. Oh, so jujitsu, it's. It was like a mind blow thing. Mm. It's like, oh my god, you can do all that in the nogi thing. Yeah. So, for me, it was again, it's like Harvard going and taking you to Harvard and letting you, like, study something over there. It so definitely fired you up a bit, huh? Oh yeah, it changed again. It fired my jujitsu back again. Yeah. So like uh, that's why I wanted to learn. Mm-hmm. That's when everything like clicked in together. Like, oh, this is it. Like it gives you like a bit of like confirmation that. Like the hard work you're putting in is like, okay, it's, it's acknowledged, but they're still. Because be you like, know mm. that that getting acknowledged in that room is very difficult. So it's 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 good to know that sometimes. There's no yeah, room bro, like, like it, man. Yeah you, yeah, you know what I mean? You, you're doing it. Mm-hmm. It's really good sometimes. People. There's no room like it, man. No, no. That environment is like always leveling up. There's always, it's always moving forward, man. It's always improvement it's it's crazy man exactly. I just every day i think about it, i'm like bro this is the room to be and, in and, and and it's a, and it's and, and i what i love about the room is that it's uh, not also uh an improvement in your techniques it's a psychological improvement mm. how john takes things you mm-hmm. know what i mean how john implement things and show you things and teach things and 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 they do he do he does all that so that you can also psychologically be ready yeah for everything that it goes on so it's again i cannot think enough this opportunity and then one thing that's good the way we train especially now you you've been getting into refereeing oh yeah right thank you you, thanks thanks again for to mo mo how did that how did that work out so it was uh it was an it was an event and i remember that gordon was doing a seminar and he started doing the referee seminars at WNL. At WNL. You oh, remember? the road to ADCC? Yeah, the road, road to ADCC. That's, exactly. that's when the team 
exact broken half. Exactly. Mm. That day. That was a crazy. Bro, that was a crazy ass. two days. For for, for for me, it was two days. It was a week. Freaking crazy. It was a week. Because yeah. it was here in Austin. It, it, it happened in Austin, but I'm not saying it started, but things started to like Bro. get heated Bro. that week of the week Bro. of. And it I was, was like, insane. fuck. It was, it was a crazy week. It was insane. Yeah. So that weekend. I don't know if because everything that was happening, you remember that we went with you guys to the event. Yeah, yeah, you were so there. Yeah, I remember. We were there. Yeah. So we wanted to still go to that referee seminar and things because we talked to Mo about it yeah. since we were going to be here. Yeah. But Ethan was supposed to be the uke for Mo. Yeah. But since everything was going on, he couldn't go. Something happened that Ethan didn't go to that seminar. So Luis and I ended up going. I ended up being the uke. That's why I'm in all the videos. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and from that, Mo said, "Okay, so this is the first group. You guys are gonna be my first certified group." Sick. And that's how it started. Nice man. So from there, I I went to another seminar and he used me again as an uke, and that's when everybody got the certificates and things like that. And that's then later. We talk about, yeah, we can be your rest. And she said, yes. That's amazing. Yeah, man. So having the opportunity to be in ADCC, that's... Just being there. Sometimes doors open up, man, when bro. you least expect it. Just bro. being present, taking taking opportunities when you feel like yes, they're sir. there. Yes, sir. I mean, it opened the opportunity to work with this guy over here. So yeah. if it wasn't because of that... CEO! My, my scroll back to know. be working with... The, with Mr. Christos. But that's sick because you're racking up experience, man. Every week. A lot. A and lot. Yeah. A lot. A lot every week. With, from good guys, again, because every event is really good. Yeah. Not only that, I like, I love going to these events because for me, it's, it's like practice, looking at the rules, looking at, excuse every match is different. Yeah. There are scrambles that end, they start and there are scenarios that are like not too sure and it just keeps the rules fresh in my mind. Yeah. So it's like doing your homework every week is good. Yeah, it's very, 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 very hard. Because very you were you were at the last ADCC, right? Yeah, I did the uh, East Coast Trials, I did West Coast Trials, and I did the ADCC. I did the third place matchups, and also I work at the Open. That's sick, man. So, yeah. I remember there was a match. It was Juan Alvarenga. <laughs> Juan Alvarenga, and who was it again? It was not Diego Pato. It was the other guy. What was his name? I forget his name. I know Ethan faced him at a fight to win. There's that match where, what was his name again? Gabriel Souza. Gabriel Souza. Yeah, him. Gabriel Souza? It's not. Yeah. Anyways, that match where you was there is that guillotine, and then they fucked it up. Oh, yeah. yeah Remember yeah, that? Yeah, you yeah, were yeah, on yeah. that mat, right? Yeah, I was. No, I, was, I wasn't in that mat. I was in the, in the table next to it. No, you were on that table because I know, I remember when they reset he did one of the nastiest things. Like, a lot of soccer players do that, but in soccer, you're doing it on grass. They fucking, like, did one of these, like, and then he cleared his nostril, and then he fucking sprayed it all over the mats, and then he did the, uh, like, that wasn't And enough. I went to clean it, I think. And they made I, you fucking clean that shit. I'm like, Fernando, the real yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't that I was at that table doing it. I was next to them in the table. Mm. So, so, yeah. Dude, that shit was nasty. It you was sh so you nasty. should get DQ'd for that. Yeah. You get actually, actually, they they were very mad about it. Bro, do it on your do it in your rash guard. Like, yeah. be slick about it. Yeah, that was so disgusting. It's on YouTube, guys. If you're gonna watch it, <laughs> uh, Juan Alvarenga versus Gabriel Souza. I'm pretty yeah. the guy that beat Musumeci in the WNO. You know what I'm talking about? He subbed them with the north south choke. You know what I'm talking about, Christos? You guys don't do your homework, bro. I'm sorry. Waste man. Yeah, waste man. <laughs> waste man. But anyways, that's a good thing, man. The refereeing is obviously one of the things that you've been getting into now. It's a really good thing, man. And now that they're going to be a lot of opens and they're going to be in five pass and all that, it's going to be a good opportunity. And doors are opening up. All the doors that I can open with that, that would be great. I have met a lot of great people through that also. I had the opportunity to be surrounded by great people. Even Bruce Buffer, fucking, you know what I mean? Meeting Bruce Buffer. You met Bruce Buffer? Yeah. At the, at the, at the ADCC? ADCC, you know what I mean? I was El hanging Bruce. out with him a little bit because Mo told me to hang out a little bit with him. So it's 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 like having those opportunities to, to have that contact with people that you used to see in TV only 
who just admired by f from far. Mm. Now you have him up close, and it's really good to interact with those people. Had you stayed in Puerto Rico, you think you would have had like access to all these op not at all opportunities? Not no. at all. It would be a lot difficult for me to even travel to do opens and things like that. Yeah. From here, it's a lot cheaper, a lot easier. So there are no re no regrets in that regard. I mean, the only regret is missing my forest and my beach. That's it. That's not really a regret. I mean. Again, it's the only thing that I miss. You miss? Yeah, that's the only yeah, thing that I miss. Sure. Definitely, for sure. But besides that, again, I'm just living my life and, and, and appreciating the fact that I'm here. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's and you want to, I mean, personally, me, I want to be around that, like, level of, like, that elite level as much as I, yeah, as much as I can. Again, I, ha I, 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 grew, I have grown a lot of confidence because I hang around a lot of people with confidence. Yeah. A lot of my confidence in my jujitsu and my things that I do mm. in the YouTube videos that even I get the hate of whatever. Mm. All that confidence comes from training with you guys in that room and being surrounded by you guys. Yeah. And being surrounded by a guy like Gordon. Mm. Like people can talk a lot of shit. They can talk everything about him. Yeah. They can make all the jokes that they want. Yeah. The guy is the one that even though yeah. you can say he's shitting his pants, it's okay. <laughs> you know what he cleans his ass with? Yeah. Hundred dollar bills. That's right. Because he's making the bank. El fuerte. And he's the la cabra. Yeah. He's he the one. He's the one. He's the one everywhere, showing yeah. the freaking face, so you can compete. So. Yeah. The, yeah. The Gordon that people see on social media and what he does in real life. It's a different thing. Bro. It's a different thing. He's always looking out for me. He's, he's for always, it. always, always, yeah. always. Doesn't doesn't goes the day that him and Sonny don't look out for me. Yeah. So I owe them a lot. Yeah, I mean, so for me, I'm here. I miss part me of too, man. Most of the yeah. time that I'm here, I'm, I said that in most of the way that I got here is because of him. Yeah, well, so I can say the same thing. When he, f when I first met him in in Montreal, it was like he just took me under his wing, helped me. Like at the time, you know, everything he could do, he did. He goes really out of his way for yeah, people. Yeah, people, people don't see that. People, people see like the and that's good. And that's good that people don't have to see that because he only does that with people that he cares mm. he they, they can say whatever they want he you know and, and everybody in that room knows that everybody every time you ask him a question he stays oh yeah, yeah. take care of your question literally that one of the last you ones option a option b option c option d he mm. gives you all the options yeah he takes time to do that so yeah, yeah he has a i mean not everyone like for example after my match versus versus janatas he, he he just put a little he, he did like a story post he's like oh and Giancarlo and, and Taza sucked ass. But I know this is his way of showing love yeah, and man. care. A lot of people don't get that. No. You know what I mean? They don't understand like tough love or they, they their ego, we talked about it, kicks in and they want to, no man, you're right. I suck. Like there are things I could have done mean, better. I mean, you said it yourself at the chat. Yeah. So we have a chat <laughs> and Taza himself sent a message saying he suck. Yeah. So it's not like... Gordon is saying something that or talking shit about his teammate. He's mm. he's, he's like giving mm. him support the yeah. only way he knows how. You know what yeah, I mean? I remember during the pandemic, I was starting to get a little comfortable. You know, in Montreal, I had like maybe one or two good performances. Then I, I had a match against Ty that didn't go well, and then like I think it was like minutes later, bro, I got a message from him like, bro, wake up, stop wasting time. You know, you're young, but you don't have that much time. Get your ass back in training, like. Things like this, you know, like for the most part, being in that room, yes, you're learning jujitsu is great, but there are more key moments, I feel, key interactions yeah. with Gordon, of course, but he's not the only one now. You have Marigali, who's oh, yeah. at the at the peak of jujitsu, he's accomplished so much. Yeah. You Marigali. have Giancarlo, yeah, you have even the up and comers, man, can be like a source of inspiration for well, you. You course. see them going out of their way, and, and then just moments here, moments there really change you, I feel. I use, you I use uh, the examples of everybody in the room Yeah. so that I can. Sometimes you do not get motivated, but sometimes all you need to do is that we got Davis that came from all the way. Davis, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And he lives here. Mm. You know what I mean? We got Luke. We got all the guys that left their lives. Yeah. More established lives maybe than I was. No. Yeah. For freaking be here. Yeah. Why yeah. am I different from that? It's good to be able to, because me, you too, like sometimes I tell you, bro, I'm so happy you're here because I see you fucking get struggles, you know, go through struggles. I see you like, like coming, you come in the training, and your little dance sometimes. I'm like, bro, I'm happy to see you. You know what yeah, I mean? Same, same, same. See you fucking overcoming shit and all the time. So, yeah, no, definitely. Okay, you don't have regrets moving here, but like in life in general, is there something you regret? Like looking back. I will say that I will I will be better at wasting money. I will be I mean, I will do better with money. 
Good boy. I waste a lot of money. Because I, I, my life has been always like, man, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Because mm. in Puerto Rico, I used to work with people with money. They were bedridden like, because they cannot move. They cannot do anything. They had to needed me to move them around if they need to take a shit or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's people with money. And I see their families and things and wasting all their money and, and doing all they're doing and freaking whatever and not taking care of them. And he's the guy with the money. You mm. know what I mean? So I... I I I just I w- it was a point in my life where I said everything that I get I'm just gonna spend in having fun and, and 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 being at the moment. But that also took me to a path that that I didn't I, I I wasn't like managing my money as good as I'm doing now. No, yeah. So yeah, that I will probably will have more money now mm. if I would have done what I was supposed to do with the opportunities that I had in Puerto Rico because I made more good money in Puerto Rico. It was my decision, so I'm not. Obviously. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean. But that's yeah. the only thing that I will probably say that I will regret, because everything is about evolution in your life, yeah, and, and growing. Yeah. So I cannot like get mad at everything that I've done in my life, because those steps and things have took me to here. Yeah. But that money thing, I should have known better sometimes. Mm. <laughs> well, health, health. I feel like health comes first. You know, if you have to spend oh, yeah. money on things that are going to make you healthy, like oh. I don't know what you were spending it on. I mean, you don't food. Have to traveling having fun well, that's good, yeah, no? yeah, yeah, that's I mean obviously it wasn't it wasn't drugs I was uh, even though this beer made me look like a crackhead no, it wasn't it was <laughs> it wasn't on drugs it mm. was it was really good it was all like on food I will go to the places that I wanted to go I spend whatever I have to spend mm. you broke you don't have money let's go mm. I did a lot of that okay a lot of that oh, you guys don't have money don't worry about it I got you guys I did a lot of that thing that I shouldn't done you yeah i was too too much too much too much yeah, I was, yeah, too I giving was too giving too, too giving is yeah. not necessarily a wrong thing but it's a wrong thing what you're doing with the wrong people wrong thing yeah and honestly this is one thing i've i've learned oh, i gotta thank gordon about that uh for that actually is being uh too agreeable you know being too overly i'm not saying you gotta not be kind to people but sometimes you can take it too far in a yeah. given direction yeah that was me a lot yeah a lot. me I'm too i'm learning me. now to be more mm. to myself yeah and see where i'm at and if i can then yes you find if balance I'm all about that yeah. balance man you know you don't want to take it too far in one direction yeah. you don't want to take it too far in another direction but i feel like of course the norm like for for well-being and and is to be generous is mm-hmm. to be giving mm-hmm. is to you know be understanding uh compassionate all that good stuff but you never want to take it too far in in a in a given direction no. it can hurt you people can take advantage of you yeah and then people get comfortable and they get used and then they're like they're expecting it from you mm-hmm. and when you don't do it then you're the shit yeah then you're the wrong there's then a you're the motherfucker who didn't take care of me when i wanted bro then, then i need to also take care of myself yeah yeah and honestly i think i think gordon himself at a point he was like that too yeah too caring yeah. too giving too helpful too much giving he's st- he still is but he's now choose who to mm-hmm. and that's that's what i needed to learn yeah you know what i mean yeah it's, it's small yeah. small yeah small portions small circle yeah for sure man um fernando if you have an advice to give to the people out there listening what would it be be yourself all the time and don't don't feel bad for what you do being yourself yeah try to always be comfortable by being by yourself mm. with yourself so that you can be better and comfortable with other people mm-hmm. yeah trust in yourself a little bit more that's a good that, one that's that's uh, that's what i would say that's a good one man i gotta agree with you on that one yeah you gotta be yourself for sure you gotta get to know yourself man like and I feel like doing things alone sometimes, getting through adversity, you know, you get to know yourself. And yourself's always changing too. Yes. It's not like this one image that stays the way it is and never changes. It's a, it's an always like ever changing image, right? For the better. Yes, sir. So that's good advice, man. I'll take that, me too, for myself. I don't want to hold you back any longer, man. I know you got shit to do. You Tranquilo. Know, maybe. I freaking, freaking love this yeah. conversation thing. It's really I good. know you got like a 30-minute commute. We're just about like around the time where you're going to make it on time a little bit late. <laughs> <laughs> Fernando, thank you so much, man. It was uh, great really having you really on the podcast. It, you guys go support the YouTube channel. Okay, keep the hate coming. Hey, hey. Keep again. 
keep the prayers keep all that positive energy that I'm giving you know what I'm gonna keep posting the videos I'm gonna keep making content the editing is gonna still suck for now but I'm gonna get better and uh, yeah please subscribe to the new wave channel and yes I'm the guy behind it so so yeah so you you to the listeners you have any plans on like pimping it out or for now we're just we're just doing this for practice we're just getting a feel for it we're still in like the early stages we don't want to like you know what i mean it's like we're just getting comfortable with the process i mean i never done this so i'm definitely getting comfortable with the process is something that i definitely would love to see grow yeah i don't think that pimping it out is going to be an option yeah obviously i will i would love to get help that would be great you know what i mean in the future mm-hmm. so, they, so that the content get the better yeah and yeah i don't mind like yeah we can like ideas and things but again i'm not people say man you should make a lot of money from it i don't even know how to make money from youtube so yeah. it's okay yeah. i don't I, i'm not doing it for the money i'm yeah. not doing it for the oh yeah i'm gonna do. i'm doing it because again people need to see what we see every day yeah why we can where we even though we're beat up wants to go there we want to go there even though we're fucked up mm. and we're on the way driving there man why the fuck am i going to train then when you get out of train it's like oh this is why i came here mm. this is the things that i wanted to see and to be honest i feel like just how doors opened up for you you know just being there being being like present when the time matters and just continuing to do what you got to do Things will come and people yeah, yeah, will come yeah. to you. Yeah. I saw a comment on one of the comments on YouTube was, uh, uh, this looks like a guy who just got there and he's using the phone and just recording things. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> I'm using this phone right here. <laughs> this is this is my camera. Bobby. So I'm answering your question. Yes, that's exactly what is going on. Good. So yeah, I'm using my phone. I did an update, right? I put a, a, some, some, something to stabilize myself because I know my hand shakes a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people, we get in there, we get in there. We're gonna make it happen. It's a slow process. Where we're gonna get there. And keep the interaction going. Keep the interactions sure. going, guys. For if sure. you got a sure. shit on him, do it. Who go cares? ahead, go ahead. Go it's ahead. really good. So again, the good comments it's good for help me understand that it's really good. And thank you guys for the support. But the bad comments are the ones that I learned from. Yeah. So please, keep them coming. Again, keep them prayers and the things. Keep them coming. I really like that. I really like that. So, guys, make sure to subscribe to that channel. You guys can follow Fernando also on on IG. Yes, sir. Fer underscore 100 per 35. Yes, yeah, a little bit weird. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you can subscribe here also. Yeah. With this guy who's Subs- amazing. Obviously, subscribe to this podcast, amazing guys. Guy. We're, we're, we're amazing guy. We're and... Gonna- this Enigma, guy, Enigma, Christos. Christos. Christos, bro, you freaking rock, bro. Yeah. You should know that you rock. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for making this happen, guys. We're going to be back. Make sure to support. Make sure to let the people know we're going to be having other teammates. And uh, that's it. Let us know in the comment section what you think. And then we'll be ready for good or bad. Tu sabes. Tu sabes, manito. <laughs>